Hi, I'm Trish Bruds. I'm a staff member here at Bentley Memorial Library. Tonight, I'm gonna to show you how to make no-sew fleece tie blankets. If you can use a scissors, a ruler, and tie a knot, this is the project for you. It's very simple and great for the whole family, all ages. So the first thing you need to do is pick out your fabric. So you can either buy kits that are already put together for you. Uh, Joanne sells those, they're actually on sale at the moment. And those will have typically a pattern and a solid coordinating color. They're already pre-cut, ready to go. Um, you can also buy off the bulk, which is what I did. I picked a, a pattern that I liked. I found a coordinating color. So now what I need to do is I need to make those pieces the same size. So what I've done already is I've cut three edges and I've left the final edge so I can show you a couple of things. One, you wanna look for a salvage edge. So this piece makes it really obvious because it has Joanne and anti-pill written right on it, easy to find. The one that's a little trickier is, for example, on my solid piece and on the opposite side of both fabrics, it's just tiny little holes, which I'll zoom in in a second to show you when we start to do some other work. So you need to get those cut off. When you're cutting your fabric, you just want to make sure that you wind up with your length and width being a whole inch number. So for example, if it's 72 inches long, you want it to end 72, not 72 and a half or 72 and three quarters. And the reason for that is we're going to be cutting strips. So ours are gonna be one inch. You could also do two inches if you wanted them a little wider. But either way, you wanna make sure when you get to the end that you don't have a little half inch piece or three quarter inch piece, which is going to look a little off. I've zoomed in here to show you the salvage edge. You can see the writing here along the edge. Can you see those little holes? They're hard to see on this side, but they'll be on this side and the opposite side of both pieces of fabric. When we look here on the solid fabric, it's easier to see those holes right in there. So this is the part you need to cut off. I've backed up the camera so you can get a better picture of the project. This project is very forgiving, so you don't have to worry about being precise. When you cut the salvage edge, you don't need to measure, just go as straight and even as you can. For this blanket, I used a yard and a half of each piece of fabric. You could use two yards for a slightly larger blanket if you wanted. Okay, so we need to figure out the right and wrong sides of the fabric. So if we look here, you're gonna see that this bear, see how much darker in color it is? There's a lot more saturation of color on this side. And the patterns are much more distinct, whereas on the back side, the, um, the colors are more muted. And, you know, if you compare the bear and the moose to the bear on this side. And then also the pattern just is not as distinct. So that makes a big difference. So you want to have that facing the wrong side on the inside you want to see the outside. Same thing with the solid colors. See how there's more color saturation here and versus this one is more muted. So you want the more muted one in the middle and you want to keep this deeper color which is your good side facing out. Okay now that our fabric is prepped we need to cut a square off of each corner. This way when we tie the blanket we won't get bunching here in the corner. So I cut a four by four inch square out of a cereal box to use as my template. And uh, these work great. So I'll cut this corner out. We'll just make a little snip on this side. Okay, same thing over here. And then I'll just cut right up to meet them right in that top corner there. And then I'm going to do the same for the other three corners. So you have all four corners cut out. Now that we have all four corners cut out, our next step is to cut our strips. So you're gonna need a yardstick or a ruler. Um, a regular ruler will work just as well. So I cut out an extra four by four inch square out of my cereal box to help me keep the ruler straight as I move down the length of the blanket. So line up your ruler with the edge here and then make a cut every inch. So I'm gonna start at the corner, work my way all the way around. Make sure you're cutting through both pieces of fabric. Go with long cuts versus short little snips and your cuts will be cleaner and straighter. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna finish cutting my strips. There are several different tying methods. This one starts off like you're tying a shoe. So you're gonna cross your bottom fabric over. See how you create a hole here with your finger. Then you're gonna pull that through and pull it tight. Okay. So you're gonna do that again. This time you're gonna take the pattern piece, pull that over the solid. Okay, you're gonna pull right through that hole and tie it tight. So you want it tight and up near the body of the blanket and that's what holds your blanket together. So you wanna make sure those are nice and secure. You can adjust it a bit um, to make sure it's at the edge. So let's do this next one so we can secure the corner. Again, you're gonna go over, pull it tight, and now the alternating fabric on top, right over through that hole that we've made with our finger and pull that tight. So here is my finished blanket. I like the look of the solid showing on the front along the edge here and then on the back where you can see the pattern I think that looks really nice and it adds a little pizzazz. So that was tying method number one. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you another tying method, which I'm using on this blanket. For this one, we're gonna wrap it, let me go this way, wrap it around your finger, take both pieces of fabric, wrap around, and then right through the hole that you created, you're gonna push both ends of the fabric through, and then you're gonna push it up like you're tightening a tie. Go up, there we go. Oh, now if you find that you've tightened it before you got all the way up toward the blanket, kind of in the middle there, you wanna move all the way up. Just loosen it up, no problem. All right, play with it just a tiny little bit, and then you just push it up. So on this project, I've been alternating which is on front, or which fabric is facing front and which is on the back. And so you can do it whichever way you want. You can do it haphazard, have all the solid on the front or alternate like I'm doing. And actually with such a busy fabric, I think next time I would go with all solid on the front. Um, but with this project, I do really like though the way these sit. So let me straighten that out for you. So see how they lay nice and flat? Um, so let me show you the difference uh, in the results from these two different tying methods. So we've got that one where they lay flat and then our original one. So see how they splay out? And that's because when we tied them, we pulled them apart like that and they splay out, yep. Yeah. And so it just gives you a different look. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will give making tie blankets a try. Uh, let us know at the library if you have any questions, or if you make one, you can send us a picture. If you're making one for our blanket drive, we can't wait to see it. So keep an eye out for news for more events we have coming up. We're going to have a version of a Zoom paint night coming up in January, and that we're going to be painting a bowl. Also, we're going to have a talk from Ray Hardy on white-tailed deer in fall and winter, so that should be fantastic. And there's even more coming, so keep an eye out, and we hope to see you soon. Take care.